Okay. Welcome uh, to the Zohar class. The portion of this week is uh, Vaikra. Vaikra, uh, the meaning of Vaikra is God called <coughs> Moses. And we are starting a new book. We are starting the third book of the Torah, which is the Bina. Bereshit was Keter, Shemot was Chokhmah. We are starting a new book in the Sefirah of Bina. Uh, Vaikra is all about sacrifices. It's all about sacrificing animals on an altar in a uh, temple <coughs> used to have. Uh, it's a very interesting subject. I know sacrifice sounds strange, but we're going to explain what's going on. Um, in the old times, a person made a scene or had a or made a mistake, so he would take an animal to the Kohen Gadol at the Tabernacle or at the Temple, and the Kohen would sacrifice the animal and burn it. It's more burning than sacrificing, and then um, that person would become pure. But it's very interesting. The, the Zohar says that it's not the animal make the person pure. It's the animal. The person have to make himself pure. Have to have it make a teshuvah in Hebrew language, changing himself by sacrificing animal. Nothing would happen in the physical. Way. So he had to change himself, transform himself. And we're going to learn about it. Uh, but before we go to the talk about the, the portion Vaikra and sacrifices, we are in a very special time of the year. Uh, we just started uh, spring, and uh, in one week or well, ten days, we're going to have uh, Passover. Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Passover. It's, it's very, very interesting. We had classes about Passover last year. I highly recommend go to erisculturecenter.org and listen to our last classes. I try to improve every year, to have new information every year. So, what, what's so special about now, about this time of the year? Uh, you know, we have two New Year's in Jewish calendar. We have Rosh Hashanah, which is in September, October, and then we have Passover, and we both call it Rosh Hashanah. So, Kabbalistically, Rosh Hashanah is the creation, is the creation, and uh, Passover is the quality, is the quality of your life. So, in Rosh Hashanah, they determinate what's going to happen to us, how much money we're going to have. If you're going to have children, if you're going to have a business, they set the rule for us. They set the a law for us for the next year. Qanun Saladigaro, they set for us on Rosh Hashanah. If you know Hebrew, Rosh Hashanah, we read how much money I'm going to have, Chasve Shalom, if I stay alive or not. So everything is determined like the law of the next year is Rosh Hashanah. In Passover, is the quality of my life. I have a chance to make the quality of my life better. What happened in Passover? A miracle happened. Um, the Creator came and took us out of Egypt, out of uh, bondage. And we know bondage means like we are addicts, we have an addiction, we have certain negativity. We are not free. We don't make a choice. We are ruled by this Satan that tells us what to do. I'm always angry. I'm always hateful. I'm always controlling. I'm always jealous. So in Passover, we have a chance to improve the quality of our life. Um, and I learned something amazing this year about Passover and spring. Do you know how you say uh, spring in Hebrew? Aviv. You know, uh, knowing Hebrew is, is essential for studying Kabbalah. And if you don't know, that's okay. That's why I'm here to share it with you guys. Uh, 
they call the Hebrew language a holy language. Why, why is it holy? Because there is so much wisdom in it. Uh, we're going to talk about holiness and wisdom later on. In a spiritual world, there is no nothing as the concept of holiness. So it's holy only in a physical world. But if you take the same concept to the spiritual world, it's not holy anymore. It's a wisdom, it's a chokhmah, it's an understanding. So Hebrew, they call it the holy language because there is so much wisdom in it. So spring, aviv, if you break it down, av means father, and yud bet means twelve. The numerical value for yud bet is twelve, and av is father. So it tells us that the spring is the father of all the twelve months, all the twelve astrological signs. If you remember the, the classes of astrology, the name of the creator is uh, Yud He Vav He, and we said Yud is the spring, He is the summer, Vav is the fall, and the last He is winter. And the Yud is the most important, is the, is the, the light of the creator. So spring is the father of all the seasons, is the father of all the months. That's why uh, Passover is in spring. Being the father of the month is, means that whatever I do, whatever consciousness I have in spring during the Passover is going to determine what's going to happen to me for the rest of the year. Is the seed level, the spring is the seed level of the whole year. It's not by accident all the flowers, all the trees they come back to life, all the animals they start, you know, getting close to each other. Because it's the father, it's the beginning, is the root, is the cause for the whole year. So if if spring is the father of the whole year. That makes it that the, the three signs, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, they are the father, they are the root, they are the cause for all the other signs. If you remember the, the page from, again, from the astrology class, you see Yud, He, Vav, He. This is spring, summer, fall, and winter. So Aries, Taurus, and Gemini are on the top. They are the root. And then, all the other signs, they extend, is the expansion of the first three signs. Like the same thing like the Sephiroth. So in reality, if you have three signs and all the other signs, they are the extension of the, the first three signs. So, what is the consciousness I'm supposed to have in spring or in Passover in order for me to have a good quality, good year. Are we okay so far? Is it too technical or we got it so far? Okay. If you don't understand something, write it down and we're going to talk about it later. So what's so special about Aries and Taurus and Gemini that if I have the right consciousness, if I'm going to have their consciousness, then I'm going to have a good year. Then I'm going to have a wonderful year. Uh, starts with Aries. Aries has the biggest desire. They have the biggest ego. They have the biggest desire to receive. And they are stubborn. And who was the god of the Egypt? Again, the, the ram, the same animal that represents this, this sign. So, what was wrong with Egypt? That they had this huge desire to receive, but it was for self alone only. They were all thinking about their own body. They want to save their body for many years. They were very selfish people. But spiritual people, they turn around that selfish desire to receive for self alone. We have the desire to receive in order to share. So... That ram, or tale in Hebrew, that sign has the biggest desire. But we have to switch it, switch that desire from to receiving for self alone 
is I want to receive, but in order to share. I want to receive wisdom, I want to receive money, I want to receive health in order to provide to others, in order so I can be a cause for others, a channel of goodness for other people. And uh, stubbornness, you know, how, how can stubbornness be good as a good thing? In Torah, over and over, they call us, you know, stubborn people. Stubbornness is a bad quality, but for us, it worked good because we were stubborn enough to hold on to Torah for 5,000 years. We didn't give up on Torah. So, stubbornness is a bad character for a negative thoughts, negative actions. But stubbornness is also a, could be a good character that we hold on to good things. We hold on to our class. We hold on to our family. We hold on to our community. We, the most important, we stubborn enough to stick to the Torah, to the Zohar, to this spiritual journey. If we are a wishy-washy person, if you are not stubborn, then we can give up this, this journey also. So Aries, like we said, they are stubborn, they have a huge desire, but we have to practice that this year, make a, take a commitment on myself. This coming year, well, I'm gonna have a, I have a huge desire to receive everything, but it's going to be in order to share, not for myself. If I want to buy a new house, yeah, I'm going to buy a new house, definitely, but maybe I'm going to have a class in my house. Maybe I'm going to, somebody that needs food, I'm going to invite them to give them food. Maybe there is somebody, a tourist, doesn't have a place to stay, so I invite them to my house. I want a brand new car, wonderful, buy the car, but take your children to school with it, you know, bring somebody to Kenisa like all of you guys do. <laughs> So, it's, oh, you want to have money? Go for it. All the money in the world, but not only for yourself, yeah, to be a channel of light. Really. Another quality of, of Tale, of Aries, that they are very organized. You know, what we call Pesach, Seder Pesach. Seder in Hebrew means organized, you know, being, uh, um, what's the other word for being organized? Just uh, bring order to your life. Aries, they have orders. Look at these pyramids they built. What a precise order. They cannot build pyramids today. But because their God was Aries, they were connected to this power of Aries. They were persistent. They, were, uh, uh, they had order. And they knew how to do things. So... I want to promise myself, you know, like the way you guys go are, the wonderful student, I'm going to be a maximum effort, I'm going to be organized in my life, bring spirituality, all the goodness that we learn through these classes to my life, and being organized about it. Not one day yes, one day no. Let's talk about uh, Taurus. So, Again, we are in a period, we are in the beginning of a new year, we are in spring. If we practice these characters, we're going to have a better year, much better quality year. Taurus is during the month of A.R. What are we doing during the month of A.R.? We read the Omer. You remember the 50 nights of Omer, 40 nights that we practiced last year too? Every night there is a different subject. Be more compassion, give more love, more kindness, open the gate of this for me, open the gate of that for me, healing for me. So, Taurus, the character of Taurus is first of all, is laws of uh, humanity, laws of my connection with the Creator, uh, is to know the laws, to know the, the rules of the game. It's all judgment. You know, we know that Taurus, the ball, is all about judgment. I have a judgment. In English, it doesn't make sense. In Hebrew, they said din. Din means laws. You have to know the laws. You have to know the rules. 
You don't know the rules, you don't know the law, then you don't understand and you get hurt. So during the 50 days of Omer, we learn all the laws, all the rules that I have to behave in order for me to have a good year. Taurus is also a very strong animal, like the one that have a statue in the stock market. You have to be strong. That's the rules of a jungle, and only a strong uh, survive. If every obstacle, every ch chaos, every challenge is going to put me down, how am I going to have a good year? You want to have a good year, you have to be strong. Deal with the issue, like a bull. And Gevura, that stands for Gevura, being Gibor, being a hero. Being a hero in your life. If you start the year by a victim consciousness, I'm a loser, you know, I, I lost here, I lost there, you, you're not going to have a wonderful year. Whatever it is, I'm going to face it like a bull, I'm going to deal with it, I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm the king of my life, but there is rules that I have to obey them and know the rules. That's why we're start studying Kabbalah, to know the rules. Now, Gemini. Uh, in Farsi they said <laughs> We had two animals and the Gemini is, is two men, right? So we had the ram, we had the bull, now we have the human. So Gemini is, has a, there is a very nice thing uh, about the, having balance. Gemini first of all is, has the wisdom has the Chokhmah. In, in the month of Gemini we receive the Torah. So first, you have to be like a Tale, like the Ram, have a desire. If you don't have a desire, you won't leave your house. You have a desire to learn, you come to the class. You have a desire to make money, you go after the money. First you have to have a desire. Then you have to know the rules and to be a strong and a hero. Not to give up because today is cold or hot or somebody put me down in the class, I won't come to the class anymore, no. And the third is bring Torah to your life. In the month of Gemini, Sivan, we receive the Torah. So you have to have the Torah in your life. And with the Torah, finally mm -hmm. you're going to become a human after the two animals. And it's so funny, I... Look at the center column, all of them are human. The Gemini is human, Virgo is human, all the other ones are animals. Uh, Sagittarius is half human, half animal, and, and fish is also is not considered as an animal because it's in the water, it's full of chesed. So, Gemini, be, a, be a human, be a humane. You know, we don't want to, we're going to learn about sacrifice. The whole book of Vaikra talking about sacrificing the animal, we're not talking about sacrificing people. So, we have to sacrifice this animal within us. What is the animal within us? We have two aspects within us. We have the soul, which is pure, is uh, like the creator, and we have the, the animal part that is stubborn, is hateful, is selfish, uh, everything is for myself, there is no wisdom, there is no knowledge, there is no chokhmah. A human has a chokhmah, has a wisdom, has an understanding. So we want to behave with wisdom, understanding about everything and everyone. And Gemini has a balance. Gemini, he, he see everything, see the truth behind everything. This wonderful lady, she just says, you know, somebody's going through difficulties. Don't fall into the story. See what is in it for you. So as a Gemini, every situation, any scenario, whatever happens, all of us, we all supposed to act like a Gemini. See what is in it I can learn from. See the truth about every situation, not just the face value of the situation. And Gemini is the central column and is all about balance. Uh, I, I learned a beautiful sentence about balance, what balance means. If balance is a nice word, 
But what balance means? Balance means if you are poor and if you are rich, you are the same person. Balance means if you are healthy or unhealthy, you are the same person. Balance means you are gorgeous, best model, or you are ugly, you are the same person. Balance means that nothing in this physical world changes who you are or what you are. You always talk about balance, you know, that Bene Israel or a central column, they have balance. Balance means that no title, no money, no looks, nothing from the physical world change who you are. You are a good person, giving, loving, caring, no matter what. We all know the story, somebody overnight become rich and they change. Somebody become a president, they change. So balance means you are, you stay who you are. <coughs> No matter what happened to you in the physical world. So, when we're talking about the spring, a new beginning, Passover. Passover is not, now they had a class this Tuesday, they cover everything, all the physical aspect of it. But this class is all about conscious. It's not only about saying happy Passover, it's not only about eating matzah. I show it to you guys. You are starting a new year. This is the seed level. This is the beginning of the new year. I determine what kind of a year I'm going to have. So however I'm going to behave in the next month, in the spring, is going to determine the quality of my life. And we already covered all the quality we should have in spring. It's amazing, this system of the sign and spring, <coughs> You know, knowing your sign, the astrological sign is essential about knowing Kabbalah. So, they always say free, free, we are free in Passover, we become free from Egypt. Can you imagine if you go through this process, you make a decision and you decide that this is the kind of behavior I want to have, you're going to be free. We are in a free country, it's not a physical freedom, it's a physical is a freedom from this addiction and wrong personality that we have. Um, like we said a few minutes ago, if somebody is extremely beautiful or rich or has a huge title, they are slave to that title, they are slave to that money, they don't have no freedom. So the holiday of freedom is f free from whatever makes me a slave. Whatever from the physical world set the rules for me, the way to live. No. I want to make a choice. I want to be free. Uh, I want to send my soul to be free. Not to be on a slave to the negative uh, aspects. So that was about spring, and we cover Passover, and you know, a, a miracle happened in Passover, and it's going to happen to us. If we obey the rule, if we know what the way I'm supposed to act, a miracle is going to happen to us. There was a miracle happening in Passover. It's still, it's here for us. But we have to speak the language, we have to walk the walk, in order for the miracle to happen to us too. Um, in, in Passover, the Creator Himself, over and over the Torah says, took us out of the bondage. But in order for the Creator to get involved in my life, I have to act like Him. I have to be like Him. A Gemini, by the way, is two men. Do you remember what this two men stands for? Who, who remembers? One of them is us, the other one is the Creator. He says, be like the Creator. In the Torah says that the Creator created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. So the two men that we see, mm -hmm. one of them is us, and the other one is the Creator. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to be like Him. You like Him, then 
the miracles and the good quality of life gonna come. And being like him, I want to repeat it for whoever is, is new. This is the DNA of the Creator. This is what the Creator is made of. His quality, his character. Uh, chesed is kindness and love unlimited. Kindness and unlimited love. Gevura is being strong, having strength. Spiritual strength, not the body strength. Having determination. Tiferet, we just talked about it, having balance. I'm happy, healthy, young, successful. No matter what is my social status, how I look. So I have this balance. I'm always shining. Always my neshama is shining. Netzach means victorious, having emunah. Hod is being like Kohen Gadol. Provide, being in peace and providing peace to others. What was the job of the Kohen Gadol? Anybody got sick, go to Kohen. They didn't have doctors at the time. Any marriage situation, they go to a Kohen. Any sickness, any business issue, they go to a Kohen. You have to act like a Kohen. You have to provide to anybody around us. Whatever we can do. And Yesod, do good, stay away from bad. Very simple. Every day, do good, stay away from bad. And Malchut is joy and happiness, not from the physical world, joy and happiness from my soul, but from my belief system. That I'm protected, um, I'm in the right place, in the right time, I enjoy every day. I enjoy my family, my friends, my class. So if we behave this way, if we have this character, then we are the twin of the, the Creator. Then we have His powers and He's going to watch over us. So which way it flows? Um, the light always comes from up to down. The light, we are a vessel. So the vessel is from down to up. You are not the light. The light always shines from top to bottom. But the, as a vessel, we have to raise ourselves from the below to up. But we can be the light for somebody else. I can, we can be the kettle for somebody else. Giving them wisdom, giving them understanding. So between me and my Creator, I'm the vessel, but I can be the light, create light for somebody else. Wonderful Frank, he said hello to everybody, by the way. He said he couldn't make it tonight, you have to go to some places. I said, be the beacon of light. Be, you know, you shine light uh, to everybody. We create light or we share light? Share light, thank you. We create light by having children. But thank you for the language, we share light. But uh, when we have children, that's creating light. Um, let's go to the parasha. So we're done with Passover, we know what the spring, we know the miracle, we know the energy of the year. We want to have a, with the right consciousness, we're going to have a wonderful, good quality. Oh, one more thing about the spring, about the spring and the energy of Passover. We have to decide now, if this coming year, am I controlling the Satan or the Satan is controlling me? We have to decide now. And whatever we're going to decide, then that's going to be the seed level for the whole year. <coughs> Who is Satan in me? You know, all the anger, all the hate, all the controlling, <coughs> all the pride, all the judging constantly. I go through it very fast, but it's not easy. It's the jealousy within me. So we have to decide. You know, <coughs> Passover is a time to decide who's, who's running the show. Am I, my soul is running the show or am I going to let the Satan run the show? It's very difficult. It's not easy. But the Torah says you make a decision and the Creator is going to make the miracle for you and going to take you out of the darkness. If you make 
B'nai Yisrael, they decided that they want to leave Egypt, and the Torah over and over says, His own hands, the Creator with His own hands, came and opened the sea, had an uh, kavod, um, the protection uh, cloud, and make all the miracles to come out. Make a decision, enough with all this negativity that I carry with myself, I'm going to decide, I'm running the show in this coming year, and he's going to, the creator going to make the miracle for us. Um, let's talk about the parasha. This parasha, again called Vaikra, is all about uh, sacrificing animals. Sacrificing animal in Hebrew is uh, korbanot, or korban. Again, Hebrew language is amazing. A korban has many meanings. It has uh, sacrificing, it means closeness. Karov in Hebrew means closeness. And it also means krav means fighting. And kar also means cold. There is is a very complicated word. Again, it's a holy language in our perception. But a holy in spirituality means wisdom. It has a lot of wisdom in it. Same word can have same many meanings. Same word can get suggestions. It can have a numerical value. So sacrifice in English sounds horrible. You know, we said I'm going to sacrifice my life. I'm going to sacrifice my time. Uh, and like we said, in the old times, they used to sacrifice animals to make the quality of the person's life better. But the Zohar says, by sacrificing animals, nothing would happen. It would just be an indication for the person to change himself. So, sacrificing means the sacrificing the animal within us. Sacrificing the animal behavior, in Hebrew they call it nefesh behemi, it's like my nefesh, my, my uh, animalistic behavior, to sacrifice it, to give it up. Nafsa heivani. Nafsa heivani, thank you very much. Nefesh behemi in Hebrew. Um, so, and it says, you know, and they, in the old time they used to sacrifice the animal and then burn it. And the Torah emphasizing on burning and burning and burning the animal. On, on a place called Mazbeach. And the Zohar says, you know, we have to sacrifice and burn the animal within us in order so we can get close to the Creator. This negativity within us separates us from the Creator. We have to sacrifice it, we have to burn it in order so I can get close. You remember, korban means sacrifice, karov means also closeness, to get close to the Creator. The Zohar says a very nice way, and we covered in the past classes also, if the Creator is up here, the Rampin, and we are in Malchut, there is a blockage, there is a blockage, that animal, that Satan sitting here, by sacrificing it or by burning it, I create unification. Unification with the Creator. You know, sometimes we call a person a holy man, right? You know, he's shiny, he's full of light. We call him a holy man. Why? Because he sacrificed, he destroyed, he burned that animal within him. And he, he has the Creator within himself. That's why he's a holy man. So, what burning means? What part of me I have to burn? And animal consciousness that I said we have to destroy means whatever separates me from the light, whatever I want for selfish reasons, ego, anger, stealing, killing, being reactive, temporary fulfillment. That's how animals behave. Animals kill, everything is for themselves. Uh, they want temporary pressure, they're reactive, they don't have no wisdom. So, how, how we burn and sacrifice this animal within us? 
Uh, let me give you a few examples and then it's going to be more clear. You know, sometimes we get hurt, a person put us down or take away our money or hurt us. We have this burning feeling, you know, we have this that stays with us. We worry about it all night, all day. We have this burning feeling within us. That's the kind of burning the Zohar talks. Somebody put you down, hurt you, <laughs> took your money, or whatever, and, and you feel bad about it. And it's like there is a fire within us. Not the fire of anger, is, is called burning, and we're going to explain more. And this burning is actually good for us. We're going to cover <laughs> this, how beautiful. We are supposed to burn the animal within us, right? How are going to burn the animal within us? I have to be in a situation that I'm, not me, not my soul. That animal is burning. The ego is burning. Somebody hurt me, call me ugly. I don't care what people say about me. I shouldn't care about what people say about me. But when I go home and I have this burning fire, is my ego is burning, which is good. Let it burn. Because you know who you are, you, know, you have a balance, you're supposed to be a Gemini. Nobody determines if you're ugly or beautiful, you know who you are. So if somebody hurts you and you're burning, it's a good thing. Because it's not you, I want you to separate your soul from your animal. If somebody hurts you and you're burning, it's the animal is burning, not you. A second example. You, you want to say something, you want to confront somebody, you want to go to a court, you want to have an appointment, uh, and you worry about it, you're constantly burning about it. What should I say? Should I say the right thing, the wrong thing? That means you don't have no emuna. that means you don't have no certainty. Who doesn't have emuna? Who doesn't have certainty? The animal, not me. Our soul has a hundred percent certainty, emuna. But if I'm worried about how to confront somebody or how to be in a situation, how I'm going to a court, oh my God, what's going to happen? I'm lose sleep for a month. Who's burning? Is the animal is burning, which is good. A person that has hundred percent certainty, emuna, shouldn't burn. So if I'm burning, that means the animal within me is burning. Not me. Uh, the third example, we make a mistake. We all human, we all make a mistake constantly. And we are hiding, we are hiding the mistake. We don't want to confess. We don't want to expose the mistake. If you are hiding it, it's the ego telling us to hide it because the ego doesn't want to burn. But if you expose it, if I make a mistake and I come and tell you I made a mistake and I'm exposing it, I feel embarrassed, I'm burning. It's a good thing. Because my ego is burning, not me. So confessing is a wonderful thing in spirituality. All the religions pick on it too. Confessing is a good thing. I know we feel embarrassed, I know we feel bad, but it's not my soul embarrassed, it's the ego is embarrassed. Um, a spiritual person make a mistake, I made a mistake, but I have a certainty, I confess, I, of course we are not supposed to confess to everybody, we only confess to somebody that truly loves us, <coughs> or truly close to us. So confession is a good thing because it's burning the animal. We are supposed, I want you to understand that there is a huge separation between our soul and this animal within us. No wonder um, nine signs of the zodiac are animals. Because there is part of us that is an animal and we have to sacrifice and burn it. How to burn it? If I get hurt and I feel bad about it, good. Burn the, the animal. 
if I need to confront somebody, if I need to deal with the situation, I'm worried about it, good, let it burn. I have to let it burn so much until it gets to the point that when the next time somebody hurts me, I have to confront somebody, it's going to be like a walk in the park for me. That's, a, that's This is when I totally get out of this animal. Or if I made a mistake, confess. You're going to be embarrassed? Good. It's not your soul, it's your ego. The animal is embarrassed. And by exposing it, you're destroying it. You remember we had a class about Satan. He said, Satan, as long as he's hidden inside you, he's in power. The moment you expose him, he's destroyed. You know the Dracula, when you expose him, he become a powder? It's not a joke, it's real. So, if you're an angry person and I'm all day long and I'm happy and I'm laughing, I'm hiding the anger within me, so I'm feeding the Satan. But if I bring it out and I confess and I do something about it, then I can destroy the Satan. Let's uh, read from the Zohar about uh, this section. We are in book number 14, page 32. Section 51, that is talking about sacrificing the animal, and by sacrificing the animal, I'm going to get close to my Creator. Would you mind editing? Book number 14, page 32, section 51. So, with this conscious, we're going to read the Zohar. If you don't have the book, it's okay, just listen to it. That this is a spring, this is a new year, this is a wonderful holiday. By reading this section, I want to destroy, I want to burn the animal within me. And that's going to get me close to the Creator. It's going to bring me health and happiness and success in all aspects of our life. רבי חזקיה, הווה שכיח כמיה דרבי שמעון, אמר ליה, האי דאקרי קורבן, קירוב מבעל ליה, או קריבות מאי קורבן, על הידיע הוא לגבי חבריה, קורבן מעינן כתרין קדישין, דכמתקרבה כולהו כחדה, ומתקשרין דה בדה, עד העבידו כולה חד, בייחודה שלין. לעת קנה שמא קדישה קדח אזי ההד קורבן לאדוני. קורבן דאינו כתרין קדישין לאדוני. הוא לעת קנה שמא קדישה וליחידה ליה בת קה יאות. בגין דהשתכחו רחמים בכולו הוא על המין. ושמא קדישה דאת אתר בעיטורי לעת בשמה כולה. רבי חזקיה was in the presence of רבי שמעון. He said to him that which is called an offering, Korban means offering, should have been titled bringing near. Like I said in earlier, Korban and near is the same word, mm -hmm. or drawing near. Why then it is called offering? He responded, it is known among the friends that an offering is the drawing near. When you offer, when you sacrifice, when you burn the animal, you draw near of those holy crowns, namely the Sefirot, Chesed, Gevurah, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, Yeshua, and Malchut, who are the, the drawn together and mutually connected until they all form a perfect unity, so that the holy name be properly said. That is the meaning of an offering to Hashem. An offering is the drawing near of those holy crowns, to Yud Hei Vav Hei, which pertains to mercy donating the central kola. Thus this holy name may be perfected and unified probably so that the mercy can prevail throughout the world and the holy name will assume its crown to perform everything. You know, the place they used to sacrifice uh, the animal called Mizbeach. Mizbeach. The Zohar says Mim, and we're supposed to create unity between the Sefirot. Mim is the Malchut, Zain is 
זה רמפים, הסיק ספירות, בית איז בינה, האנחת איז חוכמה. It's not amazing. By sacrificing the animal, you unify all the sefirot. The rampim is the six sefirot. Malchut. So by sacrificing animal, again and again, this, uh, the basic rules of Kabbalah, the light is available. The Creator is right here next to you, is, is close to us. Do we have the vessel? Are we clean enough to, to make him our partner? When, if you have an appointment with the president, you know, you're going to take a shower, you're going to wear the best suit, you're going to smell good. Mm -hmm. So you want to, the creator be your partner? Come and be with you? You have to cleanse yourself, you have to clean. Get out of this animal within you. What about this word that you have written on the line? Mizbeach. That's the altar. It means altar. This is where they used to sacrifice the animal. So, Mim is for Malchut, Zer and Pim, Bina and Chokhmah. Creating a unification of me and the upper world. So, it's so funny you bring that question. Is is is. Before the class, you asked that question. We all, we talk about many situations, people putting us down. You know, we have to confront people. We make a mistake. You know, all this burning is, is, is not reality. What is my job in this life? What is, what is our job? Is to transform ourselves to a better person. To transform, to give elevation, to learn. To be wise, to have Chochman understanding. My job is not to make my everyday situation my life. Whatever happened in your life is in order for you to transform yourself to a better person. If somebody hurt you, good, maybe that person won't be in your life anymore. But what was the lesson behind it? Is the Creator's messenger to help you to burn the animal within you. Don't fall into the story so much. Don't fall into the scenario so much. Our job is to transform ourselves. We have certain amount of time to transform ourselves to a better person. It's nothing have to do with these people around us. Nothing have to do with the situations. So. When we're talking about sacrifice, it's, it's not about personal sacrifice, like the way in our language is the mother sacrifice. No. A mother sacrifice herself for the children, this is the best pleasure in the world. We don't have uh, sacrifice in, in spirituality. We sacrifice, in English, coming to class, sacrifice coming to Kenisa. Are you kidding me? This is the best fun of the week. What sacrifice? You sacrifice to volunteer in a hospital, that sacrifice, that's pleasure. Mm -hmm. So, the English language doesn't justify the word. Whatever we do in our life is not sacrifice, it's pleasure. But we have to sacrifice, we have to burn the animal within us. That one, yes. But whatever we do is not a sacrifice. But it's hard for you to go to the hospital to see the sick people. You're sacrificing the ego that says it's hard for you. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. But we can have the perception that I'm sacrificing my life for the Kenisa. I'm sacrificing my life for my children. That's not true. That's not the right concept. That's the biggest pleasure, actually, to be with your children. So, but we do want to sacrifice the animal within us. You know, we are here to give up attachment, any uh, need for recognition. This is the animal, uh, this is the animal behavior. Attachment, recognition, uh, pride, attention. It's not this animal, this ego is like telling us this is the right thing to do, but we have to be aware. 
we have to be aware that these qualities take us to the wrong place. Um, there, is a, there is a funny example about this animal. We are watching a game, we are watching a basketball or football or soccer. And we start arguing with our friends, you know, this is my team, that team is better, the score is this. This is a funny example, but it shows you where the animal is. Sometimes it gets really ugly. Maybe not in the game, maybe there's other examples you can come up with. I'm right, you're wrong. It's my game, it's my team, it's my way or not, not your way. So, who's talking here? It's the animal. So, in life, you have to learn that don't let this animal to control you, this Satan to control you. Be kind. Who cares about the game? This game is going to be over in half an hour. But if by being nice, if by burning the animal, you let your soul talk, you're going to earn a friend. You're going to have a good friendship. Who cares about the score of the game? Or any other example? So, this animal, take away your friends, take away your family, take away your freedom, take away your happiness. So, look at it, burn it, let it, let it be destroyed. So, you're going to earn all the goodness. Remember, this animal always wants a temporary pleasure. That's how you can recognize it. The animal wants a temporary pleasure. A fast food, a fast relationship, a fast pleasure, stealing the money, lying, cheating, that's fast. But a soul is a long-term relationship, you know. I don't want to steal, I don't want to go to jail, you know. I don't want to make a big mistake I'm going to pay for for the rest of my life. So the animal always wants a quick pleasure. So see where in your life you're looking for a quick pleasure. You know, a soul wants a long, is a long investment, want a long, good relationship. Uh, if we get angry and if we fight with our friend, we're going to lose our friend. So you have to remember this argument. Who's going to win, the animal or the soul? If the animal wins, I'm going to lose a friend. But if my soul wins and stay kind, I'm going to have a friend for life. So, next time somebody hurts you and you have a burning feeling, it's okay, it's good. It's the animal that's burning. Be happy about it. You're sacrificing the animal. The day that you don't get hurt, wow, that's, I know it's not easy. But if you don't get hurt, then that means you're close to the Creator. The Creator doesn't get hurt. The day you have an appointment, you have to confront somebody, you go with a hundred percent emuna, and you're not worried about it, that means you destroy the animal. The day you make a mistake and you confess it, <coughs> talk about it, you're not shy or worried about it to a loved one, you're destroying the animal. Um, this is so far about the, 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 the Vaikra, there is two points I want to share with you guys about the, we don't have that much time left, but there is two subjects I want to talk about you guys, and we're going to be done with the class. We said Korban also has the word Kufresh, means cold. You remember what cold have to do with this subject? So, uh, korban, we said means sacrifice, but karov means get close to my creator, krav means fighting with this animal, and also kar means cold. The Zohar gives an example, which I don't like to talk about it. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's, it's not the kind of subject that I like to talk about. It says after 120. After 120, the, the soul separate from the body. What happened to that body? That body become cold. cold. It's not cold because it's cold outside. If that body is in a desert, it's still going to be cold. So, it says 
when we don't have a soul, when we don't use our soul, we become cold. What cold means? Means there is no love. You know, in English we say, you know, that guy is very cold. That's a cold relationship. We had a cold war, you know, with uh, Russia. Cold hearted. So cold means that there is no soul. There is no neshama. If you are cold with a friend, that means there is no neshama. There is no love over there. And who's causing you this coldness? Is the animal again. The animal separate the soul completely. When you don't activate, when you don't use your soul, meaning your soul is love, compassion, caring, sharing, worrying. When there is love, they say, wow, that relationship is on fire. But when there is no love, they say, it's such a cold relationship. So this animal make us cold by kicking out, by pushing out the soul. Do we want to live a life with no soul? Um, they said, yeah, there is, there is a concept in English also. They said, that guy is alive but doesn't have a soul. So we don't want to be cold. We want to be warm. We want to be full of love. Um, last concept, it's in this parasha, so I want to bring it up. Is talking about salt. They said when they sacrifice, you know, something had to do with the salt. They had to put salt on, uh, on the sacrifice. And Susie June, many months ago, she asked, you know, why we put salt on the bread when we say how much see. I give her a nice explanation that was something with a numerical value. That salt and bread together, melach and lechem is the same numerical value, together become yourself. But that was then. Now, why salt? Why, why we eat salt? Our job as a spiritual person, as a Kabbalah student, is to elevate the souls of everything around us. We elevate the soul of our friends by being a channel of light, like you said. Uh, we give them chokhmah, we give them wisdom, we give them advices. Um, we're elevating the soul of, of humans. But it's not only by humans. We have to elevate the souls of everything in the four kingdoms. We have four kingdoms. We have humans, animals, vegetables, and inanimates. You remember? Four kingdoms, human, animal, vegetable, and inanimates. Inanimate means like stones or something from the nature. So, we elevate our friends, family by being channel of light. How we elevate animals? We elevate animals by eating them or by having them as a pet. Not the same animal, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the animals, when we eat the food on Shabbat, we have to have meat, vegetable on our table. So when we eat the animal, we don't do it just to satisfy our body. We're doing also to elevate its soul. That it had a purpose. It's done its purpose. It's done its tikkun by providing light and life to some, to a human, to somebody else. So when we eat meat, we elevate the soul of that animal. We give it a purpose. Same thing with vegetables or fruits. When we eat vegetables and fruits, we are elevating its soul by giving it a purpose, by saying the blessing about it. What about inanimates? How can we elevate the soul of an inanimate? The salt is representing the inanimate kingdom. When we eat salt, you know, we are giving a purpose to it. We are elevating its soul because salt is like it's a rock. So our job is to elevate all four kingdoms and by using salt, that's what we are doing. We are giving elevation to, the, to its soul. And salt is very important. Whoever studied chemistry and biology, our body cannot function without salt. There is a good word for it. Uh, I'm going to search for a word. So that's another reason why we are consuming salt. To elevate 
part of the inanimate kingdom. Thank you very much. I'm wishing you guys happy Passover, Pax Samea, Happy New Year. We're going to see you in Shabbatot. We're going to see you in Shabbatot.